Hello YouTube and welcome to my first Autodesk 3ds Max 2011 tutorial. And in this in this tutorial uh, series, we're going to be going over how to manipulate this program so you can create some complex things. Now, my myself, I have not mastered 3ds Max. I am just about as noob as you are if you're watching this because I just attended a workshop on 3ds Max and I only learned the basics as well but I'm gonna put them into tutorials for you so you don't have to go to a workshop you can go straight to youtube.com slash guitar hero 7946 that is my page my channel so if you don't already know what 3ds Max is I'm gonna tell you 3ds Max is a manipulation program which you can animate model uh, texture uh, pretty much anything you can imagine in 3ds max if you can think it and draw it you can create it in 3ds max even though if you're not a good drawer um, so more more companies use 3ds max now than more different animation programs but uh... Like VeggieTales creators, they use 3ds Max to create VeggieTales, and a lot of movies use it as well, uh, along with the camera recording of actual actors. They can put in some uh, animations to mo to enhance the movie. So I'm gonna teach you in this first tutorial, number one, how to navigate the GUI and how to create some standard and extended 3D primitives. <coughs> so let's begin. Um, when you first open it up, you might be like, whoa, what the heck? Where do I begin? Well, I am going to go over every, s not every single, because I don't even know what every single button does, but the main buttons to create some stuff and animate some stuff. So, when you first open, you'll see this in the top left. You'll see new, reset, open, save, save as, import, export, references, manage, and properties. Uh, import and export are basically just right here. Imports non-native file formats. So you can import models and objects and stuff. Export allows you to export your scene as a 3D object or model. Uh, you have your quick access toolbar. Your drop downs for various uh, tools and whatnot. Uh, your tool op, your tool menu thing. This is always the same. So no matter what you pick, this is gonna be the same. Like in most programs, like I know in Microsoft Word, if you press one of these, it's like the ribbon, and it takes you here, and it has a different set of options. Well, these are always gonna be the same. It's called, as you can see, the main toolbar. Uh, this is just basically uh, modeling tools freeform modeling graphite modeling selection object to paint uh, these are your viewports this is your top viewport front left and perspective you can also change this to orthographic and you see you can get a giant grid that allows you to create any scale of objects or anything and it the grid goes on forever I don't like orthographic view. I like perspective. It gives you a real world reference for how big the object should be. Okay, so now we covered all that. Um, right here, this is your main base. I know I said this is the main toolbar, but this is the main toolbar for selecting and transforming and manipulating the objects that you create. That you create from this toolbar area right here. Uh, you have your standard primitives, box, sphere, cylinder, torus, teapot, cone, geosphere, tube, pyramid, and plane. Now the plane, basically, oh, let me disable my snaps. And uh, the plane is basically, as it says, it's like a, a plane. So if you wanted to create a floor or a ceiling or something, you can use a plane. Or if you want to create um, like a complex hill or something, I'll show you how to do that later you can use a plane. Um, in your extended primitives you have some more advanced uh, objects. The ring wave is pretty cool. allows you to draw out this kind of weird looking shape. But when you press play animation, 
it's already animated for you, so it's pretty cool. Um, so I'm not going to get into too much detail on that in the first tutorial. Uh, I'm just going to show you what the different tabs look like. Uh, modify, say you created a box, and you want to do something with that box. Uh, you can go into modify, change the length, and the width, as well as the height. You can also change how many link segments this has, and this is uh, very valuable when you convert it to an editable mesh or polygon. You're able, so let's say if I have 20, 20, and 20, and I right click convert to editable mesh, I can use face and look at all the different faces there are in here. Right here. These are this is the polygon selection. You can select as many polygons as you want. I'm gonna get into more of this later. Just giving you examples. Demonstration purposes. Okay, so that's the modifier list. Also, we got to add you can also uh modifier actual modifiers right here you can uh, do a melt modifier it's pretty cool Let's see if I can find it there it is you can melt the object as you can see here so if you wanted to create an animation where it looks like a uh, ball of water water texture or something it um, melts you could use this and slowly animate each value so let's say like 10 and then the next keyframe 20 and so on okay you have various different things here I don't know what every single modifier does and I don't know how to use every single modifier but I do know like uh, lattice, melt, uh, mesh smooth, mirror, noise, normal, optimize I know what all that is so I'm not a complete noob okay uh, here we have our hierarchy now this I don't know what everything does either, but I mean I'm pretty sure it's all basically what it says it does. Effect pivot only is one of the main things. Uh, it allows you to affect where the pivot point is on the object. So if I move it over there and I select my object, oh turn that off. Select my object. I'm able to move it based on that pivot port point. Go ahead and just undo that. Alright, the motion comes in handy when you're trying to um, create like a camera path and you want the camera to follow the path that you create, you would use the motion tab. And I'll show you how to do that. The display is basically if you want to hide your geometry. If you're trying to do something uh, like just look at one specific animation or something and you have a lot of complex stuff in your scene, you can hide all, none, or just pick what you want to hide. And then this is just utility. So if you have a, a motion builder, you can do motion capture and stuff like that. Okay, so that's basically navigating. Um, the keyframe and everything I'm going to get into uh, in the next tutorial where I show you, well, not the next one, uh, probably, probably about the sixth tutorial. I have a little layout right here I'm going by. Uh, probably the sixth tutorial I'll show you how to use the keyframes and stuff. But for now, uh, just play around with moving around. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to tell you how to actually move. <laughs> what a noob. Okay, so basically, you're in 3D space. And you don't want to look at the same exact spot. Like, let's say you want to edit that face over on that side. Well, in order to pan you hold down your middle mouse button and just move your mouse left right up and down diagonal whatever way you want uh, in order to orbit just the hotkey you can also use this uh, where is it? Uh, right here this little tool it allows you to orbit around but I don't like using these tools I I use the alt middle mouse button and then you can pan around and that's pretty much all you really need for the first tutorial. Um, check back on my channel and I'll upload as I make them. So have a nice day and play around with those uh, tools a little bit.